Hi and welcome back to the organizing tip of the day. Today I'm in my kids toy room because I wanted to show you some ways that we organized in order to keep the kids busy without always having mommy to entertain them. Before when I had a daycare we had constant changing of activities so my kids got really used to always doing something new and fun and then when Milo was born I was busy and if you know what it's like just to be busy and feel like you don't have enough time for your kids. It's a really um, feeling of guilt, I guess. It's a horrible feeling when your kids are like, play with me, mommy, and you're like, just one minute, in a minute, in a minute, in a minute. So we did some way organizing of their toys and different things so they can, we can do something that I learned a long time ago from Nanny911, and I use this when running the daycare. It worked awesome, and it works great for my kids now. And it's called stay, play, and walk away. And basically the idea is you set things up for your kids to get started with, sort of engage them and begin the game, and then walk away and it gives you time. And because things are already set up and in place and they kind of have the idea, they can um, stay focused and have fun playing that certain activity without having you needing to be there. And then them getting easily bored. So I'll show you some examples. And I'll also show you some examples of how we organize to keep kids busy independently without mom always having to help them. So first, this is one of the greatest things I ever did. <laughs> this saves me so much time, having a, a craft center for my kids. This was just a bookshelf that we used to have books on. I purged a lot of the books because once kids read books a few times, often they just don't want them anymore. So you can do a trading program with other friends who have kids around the same age trade out books or you can just donate them to your school's library which is a really great way to get rid of your old books and feel good about it at the same time. So I just took these old cups and we have glue and pencil crayons and markers and scissors and crayons. All their coloring books are here and then these are just from the dollar store um, containers. I've had them since the dawn of time I think and they're just filled with kids craft supplies so they can easily access them whenever they want. We have a bin for stamps here, all sorts of stamps. Finger stamps, wood stamps, stamp pads, all that stuff, and then a bin for stickers underneath. Filled, filled with stickers. We get stickers as gifts a lot, so we go through a lot of stickers. <laughs> Down here is our Play-Doh tub, and here is a great example of the stay, play, and walk away. What we do in the Play-Doh tub a lot of the times is I'll put extra from party plates. You probably have extra plates, forks, knives, things like that. What I'll do is use a cloth from the, a tablecloth like this from the dollar store. This tablecloth that we use is like that vinyl material. You spread that out on the floor, then you give them Play-Doh and all of these type of things. Tell them they need to stay on the tablecloth because it's a picnic, and then have them create the food they're gonna eat at the picnic. So they can use the Play-Doh to make there's a ca Play-Doh castle in here too, but to make pizza and cookies and cakes and all that wonderful stuff. And then they have the fun of having the picnic. And then the great thing is all these things can be tossed out afterwards. And then your plastic placemat can be shaken out outside. So it's a, Play-Doh is messy, but by utilizing one of these plastic tablecloths and take, making the kids stay on it, these open up huge. It's a great way of keeping it clean. And then what we also do when we have Play-Doh picnic is I give every kid a, a gift bag and tell them, oh, it's your dolly or teddy bear or stuffed animal's birthday. So you got to make the food for the birthday party and then go around the toy room and pick them out a toy, put it in the gift bag, sing happy birthday, do the whole thing. Honestly, the, the Play-Doh picnic game takes them like over an hour. By the time they make the food, they sing happy birthday, they eat the food, they, give, they find the gifts, they give the gifts to their teddies. It's a long process, it's great for their imagination, and you get to do something other than entertain your kids. So here's another example of a stay, play, and walk away that we use all the time that's a big hit for my kids. Um, I have this bin, which has a lid. And it's just filled with dollar store gems and jewels and different things. And if I come across extra things, you know, I don't know, I toss them in. Um, like clip, pieces of clip that have broken off, pieces of my hair, kid's hair clip. Here's an example. When little things like that, buttons have fallen off, things like that, I always toss it in the bin just to make it more interesting. And first of all, kids literally will just dig through it and have fun. 
but when we play Pirate Treasure, I pull this bin out of the closet, because it's usually stored in the closet, and I give each of my kids a box to decorate. So that box might be an old Kleenex box, some other piece of box from the garbage, or you can purchase little wooden boxes for 50 cents from the dollar store. You can use a styrofoam cup. So the first thing they're going to do is decorate their treasure chest. Styrofoam cups work great because they're cheap and they're really easy to color and glue things to. So then they're gonna pick out their favorite treasure from the treasure bin and then hide it somewhere in the house. And then you give them paper to make their treasure map. So first they've designed their treasure box, then they've picked out all the treasures that they want, then they've created a map, and then they've hidden it, and then they've gone on a search for it, and lo and behold, again, you've had an hour without having to really do anything. <laughs> you can do the dishes, who knows? Put some laundry away, there's lots of things that you could do. Read a book for yourself, and your kids are having a great time and really entertained. Um, and I pull this out often. We do this game often and they never tire of it. So that's a really good example. And then we have some different paper crafts that I do ahead of time. So when the kids are bored, they can come down and there's always something ready for them. And I'll show you that example as well. So here we have this easel. You don't need to have an easel, but this is what we have. And we always have the paint stuff on hand for them because Again, I really trust my kids, they're four and six. Um, I trust that they would never do it on the wall because first of all, I would kill them. And second of all, they would be so grounded from paint and any crayons and they, they know that, so they've never attempted it. But, um, so the paintbrushes are here. They know to go to the bathroom and fill this up with water and then they have um, paper towels over here all the time. They, they just know the routine. I've done it with them a couple of times so now they know what to do and they can paint whenever they want, whenever they want. So that's something they'd love to do a lot. But when it comes to paper crafts, you'll see <laughs> she's actually, they've been doing some here. But I always have paper dolls cut out. Sometimes they're connected, sometimes they're not. It's really easy to cut out paper dolls and I just leave blank ones here so they can be fashion designers whenever they want. They just come down and they can color it with markers, they can glue on jewels, they can do whatever they want and you see they've got some here. Um, they do this often and it's just a fun way of just instead of coloring a plain picture to have something to color. We also I pre-make paper airplanes. This is great especially if you have boys. And they can decorate and color their paper airplanes and then have paper airplane races. So I always just leave plain paper airplanes and plain paper dolls there. And of course there's tons of plain paper here for just coloring regular pictures. Another way to engage a kid in, in coloring and make it a little bit more fun than just coloring a basic picture is to give them blank envelopes. I don't know what it is about a blank envelope, but telling them that they can mail the letter or make let pictures for their grandparents or their friends, they can decorate the outside of the envelope to play mailman. Envelopes make coloring a picture a million times more fun and they're very, very inexpensive. So I always have blank envelopes here as well. So yeah, that's some of the ways that we have things set up all the time so my kids can just come in to the toy room and have something to do with minimal or no input and leading from myself. And then that way they're having fun and not always needing mommy to entertain them. Um, one of the other things that I've noticed really, really helps is to have toys that are actually out as minimal as possible. So by keeping your toys picked up and organized, kids are more likely to stay focused on the one thing they are playing with and they're more likely to put the things away when they're done playing with them because they're not being overwhelmed and overstimulated by the amount of toys that are piled everywhere. That's overwhelming for everyone to have piles of everything. It's hard to focus on one task when you're surrounded by a bunch of paperwork, say, if you're an adult. The same sort of thing applies to children and toys, I've, I've found personally. So here's one way that we organize our toys so they're up, out of the way, not um, distracting the kids from what they're playing, but making it very, very simple for them to clean up their own toys. And that is by just using a tote system. These bookshelves are from Ikea. They're very inexpensive. They're the Expedia um, bookshelves. If this was in the living room, I probably would have used nice canvas totes so it would look um, a little bit neater and then just put a tag on it with the picture but because it's a toy room I opted for these more they're first of all st a lot sturdier very inexpensive dollar store totes and I just printed on clear labels from Staples the pictures I was able to get three or four on each 
um, label sheet and then just cut them out and stick them right to the front and they're easy to peel off and replace so when you change what's in it but uh, if you have kids that don't read even kids who are young and still reading this just makes it so much easier to see what everything is inside and to easily put it away so they can easily grab the tote bring it down play with that pick it back up and put it back there are many times when our toy room is a disaster I'm not going to lie but cleanup is always less than 10 minutes when you have a, a bucket system like this. And it also means that when kids do want to play with a certain thing, they don't have to go rummaging all over the place to find what they're looking for. They want to play kitchen. All the things they could ever possibly want in kitchen is inside the kitchen tote. So it just makes it a lot easier for playing, a lot easier for cleaning up, and a lot easier for keeping your kid focused, which means more mommy time for you. So anyway, those are some of our tips of how we organize our toys in our toy room. I'll give you a quick um, tour of our toy room and then that's about it. Those are your tips. If you want more, just let me know and I have a ton of stay, play, and walk away activities that you can do with your kids to keep them engaged and out of your hair. Here we go. So here's our toy room. Um, we just have this kitchen that we've had for years still gets played with all the time. If you have a little one and you're thinking of making a toy investment, I really recommend getting a kitchen. It's just one of those toys that they will play with for years and years and years and not really get bored of. Um, here's an example of something we do which is toy rotation. We have toys in this closet that's located here. It's full of toys. Full. <laughs> it's a double closet literally full of toys and we do a toy rotation so I'll take things out and put them on the floor pony castles um, Dora houses all the things that we have and this is another type of princess castle by rotating them out I just find that that's a new fresh toy for them and then by putting it away and bringing something else out that's a new fresh toy for them are you hiding over there here's our dolly center over here we have all our dolls in a basket here and then all the doll accessories and stuff are inside the little doll house. Here's our bed where we just have a, a spare bed and um, we have a little TV up there so they can have TV cuddle times here while they're playing with their toys. This is our hamster cage <laughs> and we also have just a Barbie house. They have an obnoxious amount of Barbies as you know if you have a little girl there's just a million Barbies so there's a Barbie house. We keep all our stuffed animals corralled in a laundry basket and it's a super great way to store stuffed animals. I also like hanging the stuffed animals from a hanging uh, mesh bag but this is great because they can just go through it themselves. They don't have to worry about them pulling the hanger out of the ceiling and it's easy to put them all away. And then of course we have our tote system here which is all labeled. They're overflowing obviously but <laughs> and um it's a really easy way for them to put them away and I rotate the bins so the ones that are high they have to ask for because they're a little bit higher. Well, just the top row actually. My daughter's tall enough now, but I rotate them often just to make the top ones come down so they're more new and exciting. And then lastly, it is our craft center close to our table. So if you didn't have a toy room, this is still something that I really recommend doing. Carving out just a little spot somewhere in your living room or in your kitchen. It doesn't have to be necessarily as big as this, but just having these craft supplies easy on hand and having paper products ready, paper projects ready for them to do is a super amazingly great way of making sure that your kids are entertained, have things to do without needing mommy all the time. So anyways, I still have my dress up. Do you want to see my dress up closet? This is like the longest video ever. I apologize for that. This is, we all have problems, right? We all have things that are like, you have issues. This is one of my things. I... I am a costumeaholic. My kids don't even play with them. I collect costumes. I have no idea why. I like to play dress up as a kid, so I think it's like a thing for myself, living vicariously through my kids. They're not even into it. I probably need help. But here is my costume closet. So I have 102 costumes. I've counted because I'm totally a spaz like that. Um, people. People will give me costumes, I will buy costumes at the end of the season, I will buy costumes whenever I see a costume. I have no idea why, but we have so many costumes for dress up time. Plus we have this tickle trunk filled with costumes and accessories, baskets filled with accessories. Um, filled. 
with accessories. <laughs> Never play with it. <laughs> Figure that one out. But anyways, it is fun when we have somebody over. They always want to play dress up. I'm coming. Oh, I gotta go. Anyways, um, hopefully you liked some of my stay, play, and walk away tips. Um, love to share more with you. I have a gazillion, million, trillion after running a daycare. We'll see you next time.